Hi friends, welcome to my channel Bath for All. Today I would like to discuss the 11th part of previous year question paper for the post scientific officer biology for science laboratory. Okay, if you have any doubt regarding any topic related to our exam, you can um, come in uh, that topic in the description box. Okay. I hope all of you started your preparation uh, very well. Okay, today I am going to give you a warm up tip. Uh, that is, you have to administer the person and question biology NCRT textbook thoroughly, and uh, you have to uh, written out all the points, essential point, in your personal notebook. Okay, so please start with at first. the present and question in crt biology textbook okay because the present and question biology uh, textbook especially in crt biology textbook contains uh, the most essential uh, topic related to your exam it is a summarized form of uh, the essential topic related to your exam so as a beginning i think it's uh, better to read out to the present and question biology NCRT textbook. Okay, let us start the discussion. Okay, we can look at the question, please. The question is: Seroderma pigmentosum is a disease due to option A, production of guanine-guanine -guanin dimers in DNA; option B, defective melanin metabolism; option C, defective DNA repair; and the last option is autoimmunity. Okay, what do you mean by seroderma pigmentosum? Seroderma pigmentosum is a rare genetic disorder that occurs worldwide in all races and ethnic groups. Okay, first described by Hebra and Kaposi in 1874. Okay, and the main symptoms of this disorder is uh, higher photosensitivity. and um, premature onset or arrival of all major type of skin cancer so what are the two main characteristics of this disease one is uh, the photosensitivity and the second one is the onset of major type of skin cancer okay in early in the stage okay so uh, make you look at the second part of this slide it is characterized by inability of cell to repair damage caused by uv leading to genetic instability and skin cancer okay so the point is that this seroderma pigmentosum is mainly due to the uh, deficiency in the dna damage uh, repair system okay let us look at the normal condition that is without the disease seroderma pigmentosum what happens under normal condition when light fall on skin tissue it will induce thymine dimer formation okay the thymine dimer formation is a dna uh, impairment and such a type of dna is uh, incapable of undergoing what replication normal replication process so that thymine dimer has to be removed from that particular dna so Uh, the induction or the production of thymine dimer as a result of exposure of uv light is simply called as a dna damage so dna damage has to be removed properly then only that dna will be able to undergo normal replication okay this slide actually explain the repair system in order to remove the dna damage namely thymine dimer okay Okay, from the diagram, it is very clear that at first that the thymine dimer form uh, region is recognizing, then unwinding of DNA takes place, then cleavage of that thymine dimer portion with a little amount of uh, normal portion, then filling that removed area with new correct sequences. Okay, it is known as sealing. Okay, in such a way. that thymine uh, formation that thy thymine dimer formation become rectified this is a uh, normal repair mechanism uh, which is taking place okay 
here we are actually removing the damaged portion of dna in terms of nucleotide okay we are excising that damaged nucleotide hence this repair system or mechanism is known as nucleotide excision repair mechanism okay how this normal repair mechanism become abnormal okay when uh, the uv light fall on skin what happened the pore h gene get activated and it will normally produce what dna polymerase eta enzyme okay and actually this dna polymerase eta enzyme protect cells from uv rays by uh, inducing proper dna damage repair mechanism okay when uh, this pore gene uh, become uh, not activated it will cause the disease name the urgent disorder name the what pseudoderma pigmentosum let us summarize uh, the major causes of pseudoderma pigmentosum first one is the it is a autosomal genetic disorder you know that okay the nucleotide excision repair enzymes are mutated that's why this disease is causing okay reduced or eliminated number of nucleotide excision repair enzyme then uh, metastatic melanoma melanoma then squamous cell carcinoma these are the major cause of pseudoderma pigmentosum what is uh, metastatic melanoma melanoma skin cancer that has spread to other places in your body okay it's also called advanced melanoma okay what is squamous cell carcinoma it is a cancer caused by an uncontrolled growth of abnormal squamous cells I hope now you people know the correct answer for this question that is xeroderma pigmentosum is due to defective dna repair so the correct answer for this question is option c defective dna repair okay don't forget to uh, study this dna repair mechanism because as far as your examination is concerned i think uh, the questionnaires will give some importance to this dna repair mechanism so Uh, study very well all the details regarding dna repair mechanism okay the next question is gfe pore fluorescent microscopy is obtained from option a jellyfish option b silver fish option c puffer fish and the last option is drosophila okay here gfe means what gfe means green fluorescent protein The green fluorescence protein is a unique protein that emits green color in response to blue or ultraviolet light. Okay, and it is commonly produced by a jellyfish, namely Echoria victoria. And this uh, GFP, as it is a protein, it is made up of two thirty-eight amino acids. Okay, and uh, the color emitting region of that is the fluorescence region of fluorescent emitting region of uh, this protein is known as chromophore okay so gfe for fluorescent microscopy is obtained from where the option a jellyfish so the correct answer for this question is option a jellyfish let's move to the next question the question is immunoblotting is option a western blotting option b eastern blotting option c southern blotting and option d is northern blotting let us understand the definition of blotting it is a visualization of specific dna rna and protein among many thousands of contaminating molecules requires the convergence of number of techniques which are collectively termed blot transfer or blotting technique okay so the blotting is a separation technique uh, which enable for proper visualization of the molecule which are going to separate okay the blotting techniques are of mainly three types and they are southern blot northern blot and western blot southern blot is uh, widely used to detect dna whereas the northern blot is widely used to detect rna and western blot is widely used to detect protein remember western blot is widely used to detect protein okay uh, the southern blotting technique was first discovered by scientists named em southern hence the technique is known as southern blot um, uh, and uh, northern blot and western blot are named so 
uh, because of the term related to southern plot and uh, they are named uh, because of uh, discovered by uh, northern and western that's wrong okay that is simply uh, we are giving a term related to a pronunciation related to southern that is northern and western okay immunoblotting is nothing but it's a type of western blotting okay immunoblotting um, works on the principle of what antigen antibody reaction okay the product obtained as a result of antigen antibody reaction is get separated through immunoblotting okay so in immunoblotting we are separating the protein the products name the protein isn't it so it comes under the category western blotting so the correct answer for this question that is a immunoglobulin is a type of western blotting so the correct answer for this question is option a okay you know that the elisa enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is also a good example for immunoblotting so it comes under the category western blotting also next question is which of the following is responsible for the proofreading ability of dna polymerase 1 Option A, 5 dash 3 dash exonucleus activity. Option B, 5 dash 3 dash endonucleus activity. Option C, 3 dash 5 dash endonucleus activity. And the last option is 3 dash 5 dash exonucleus activity. What is proofreading? You know that the DNA polymerase is the key and same that build DNA in cells. Okay. So the DNA polymerase is a key and same mainly responsible for the synthesis of DNA or DNA replication. Okay. During DNA replication, uh, most DNA polymerases can check their work with each base that they add. Do they are doing their work um, in correct manner or not? That is known as proofreading mechanism. Okay. And the DNA synthesis takes place in the direction 5 dash to 3 dash direction. You know that the deoxyribonucleotides are added to the 3 dash OH group. Hence, the strand become elongated from 5 dash to 3 dash direction. But uh, the proofreading mechanism namely involves mainly involves exonucleus activity, removal of nucleotide from the end and it is from the direction 3 dash to 5 dash hence it is known as 3 dash to 5 dash exonuclease activity so the correct answer for this question is option d 3 dash 5 dash exonuclease activity remember the dna polymerase one is having a proofreading capacity it is associated with what 3 dash 5 dash exonuclease activity it removes uh, the nitrogen base from the end of the dna from the direction 3 dash to 5 dash prime hence the name 3 dash 5 dash exonuclease activity okay next question is approximately 90 to 95 percent of blood t cells are option a alpha gamma t cells option b alpha delta t cells option c alpha alpha t cells and option d alpha beta t cells when you are analyzing the option you can see uh, the alpha gamma t cells alpha delta t cells alpha alpha t cells alpha beta t cells like that all these are types of t cells mainly based on the type of uh, polypeptide chain found in the T cell receptors. So they are mainly classified on the basis of their T cells receptors. Okay. Uh, in alpha gamma T cells, uh, uh, you can see uh, the receptors consisting of uh, alpha uh, polypeptide chain and ga um, gamma polypeptide chain like that. Okay. So uh, remember the most T cells are alpha beta T cells with TCR composed of two glycoprotein chains called alpha and beta chain okay then in contrast the gamma delta t cells have a t cell receptor that is tcr that is made up of one gamma chain and one delta chain like that so the correct answer for this question is option t alpha beta t cells okay remember here the t cells are classified on the basis of the glycoprotein or polypeptide chain found in their t cell receptors okay Thanks for watching. The remaining parts of our discussion will be uh, uploaded at the earliest. Okay. If you people feel my video useful, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. 
okay if you want to watch the previous video regarding the discussion part its link will be uploaded within the description box okay so don't forget to press that bell icon then only you people will be notified with each and every video at the time of the uploading thank you once again keep in touch stay safe and prepare well thank you